It's a blowout eighth inning, 10-3. Bases are loaded for Verlander, who waits out a real finish. He swings, and it's a high fly ball, deep center field. It is gone. Home run. And a huge bat flip to celebrate. All right, Ben, start the show already. What is up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Flippin' Bats. It is Tuesday, so you know what that means. This week in Shohei Otani news is coming today. Also head of the class, which is top five rookies of the week. Really gives me a chance to talk about the great rookie class there is. Also, buy or sell, which is always a lot of fun. I'm going to buy some stuff. I'm going to sell some stuff. I don't even know what it is, but just a lot of topics around the league. But... We will start, my friends, with my favorite segment of all time. This week in Shohei Otani news, he's had the greatest back-to-back nights in the history of baseball. His pitching has totally become perhaps one of the best pitchers in baseball. He's hitting balls harder than he ever has in his career. He is doing it all, and I believe He is still the MVP in the American League, and I will get to all of that throughout this segment. But let's start with Shohei Otani's back-to-back nights last week, Tuesday and Wednesday nights, becoming the best back-to-back games in the history of Major League Baseball. We'll start on Tuesday at the plate. He had two three-run homers, one of them coming in the ninth inning, to tie the game, a massive, absolute, no-doubt bomb ends up tying the game in the ninth. Not only was it a great game, he was clutch. Ends up with eight RBIs on Tuesday. Eight. All of this culminated in us needing to do an emergency Shohei podcast last week, might I add. It is truly remarkable. There isn't another back-to-back games that can compare Yeah, there have been guys that have had four home runs in a game. Five home runs in a game, even. That's happened very seldom. But, yeah, then maybe they do it once. I I don't care. There isn't a possibility for anybody to have a better back-to-back night, better back-to-back games, than Shohei Otani and what we saw this week. The very next night, after he went two for three, with two three-run homers and eight RBIs, which was a career-high eight eight RBIs. That was a career-high for him. The very next night, he pitched. So he had that career night in the batter's box, and it was known that he was the next day's starting pitcher, which was ridiculous in its own self. But what did he do that next night? He went 1-0. He got the win. 13 strikeouts on the mound, two hits in eight innings. 13 strikeouts was a career high for him. He pitched seven innings, had a fairly high pitch count, got his 12th strikeout, came out. I thought he was done. I thought he was done for the night on the mound. He ends up going in there and telling Phil Nevin, the manager, friend of the pod, just had him on, talked about managing Shohei. He said, no, this game is mine. And he went back out for the eighth. He got that 13th strikeout on the last out of the game for him and broke his career record. 13 strikeouts. The night after, eight RBIs. I don't say this lightly. I know sometimes I say these statements that seem crazy and it's like, How could you be saying this? Well, one, because we've never seen what Shohei's doing. So a lot of things. He's making history. But we legitimately saw the greatest back-to-back nights in the history of Major League Baseball on the pitching side and on the hitting side. Remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. Not only, by the way, has it never been done in back-to-back nights, eight RBIs, 12 or more strikeouts has never been done in back-to-back nights. It has only been done by one other player in the history of the game. Let me break that down. Only one other player can say that they have eight RBIs in a game and 12 or more strikeouts in a game. 
Shohei Otani did it in back-to-back nights. Unbelievable. He truly is the greatest show on earth. My shirt. The greatest show on earth. It's factual. That's what he is. He is the greatest show on earth. So yes, Wednesday, he has the great pitching outing. Uh, and, and that was just that was just the pitching outing that was just on par with what he has been doing over the course of the last month. Since that start in New York against the Yankees, Shohei Otani's pitching has been remarkable. Cy Young worthy. Now, yes, it's a it's a stretch of games, and you obviously have to include the couple of not great starts he had, which are New York and Texas against the Rangers. But since that start in New York, he's gone three and zero, a zero point four three ERA, twenty five strikeouts, five walks to twenty five strikeouts. That's remarkable. He has allowed. Shohei Otani has allowed one earned run in his last 21 innings pitched. One earned run in 21 innings pitched. He has been dominant. And I sat here and I called it after that Yankees start. I said, Shohei always does this. Take it to the bank. When he has a bad start, he finds a way to bounce back and be better than he honestly has ever been. We are seeing Shohei Otani pitch than we have ever seen him pitch in the big leagues. This last few stretch of starts, we have never seen him be as good as he is. His fastball is harder than it's ever been. His slider is moving more than it ever has. He's striking out guys at an alarming rate. His walks are minuscule. That's the one thing he had to adjust over the course of the last years was his command. And he has done just that. Five walks to 25 strikeouts in his last few outings over his last three starts. Remarkable. Career high 13 strikeouts on Wednesday. It was dominant. Blowing fastballs by guys, throwing sliders, making guys swing and miss. Shohei Otani has been remarkable on the mound. Remarkable. We have never seen Shohei look this good on the mound. I truly truly believe that but moving on I want to talk about because the pitching is certainly a big part of this Shohei Otani in my opinion is still the American League MVP he is now I hear you Aaron Judge leading baseball in home runs um Pete Alonso leading in RBIs there's tons of categories you could look at but Aaron Judge is is leading the is is the favorite to win the mvp award but in my opinion the the american league mvp right now is shohei otani why yes there are guys offensively doing better than shohei otani that's a fact and there are a few pitchers doing better than shohei otani on the mound put that all together he's He's the most remarkable player on planet Earth. What are we doing not giving this guy the MVP award every single year if he's doing this? Yes, there are a couple of people hitting better. There are a couple of people pitching better. He is one of the best players on both sides of the ball in the entire league. It's remarkable. He is two fantastic players in one. And as long as Shohei Otani is in this league doing what he is doing at the rate he is doing right now, he should be the most valuable player. No other no other words about it. He faced the Royals over the past week. That's when he struck out 13 batters. One of the best players on the Royals, one of the best players uh, in baseball for a while, underrated guy, he hasn't been so far this year, but Whit Merrifield has been fantastic in his career. This is what he had to say about Shohei Otani's outing the other night. There's still the wow factor. Nobody else is doing what he's doing. Definitely just a unique, once-in-a-generation type of player. 
and it's fun to share the field with him, for sure. This is Major League Baseball players talking about him, saying it's fun to share the field with him. That's pretty powerful of a statement. Shohei Otani is the MVP. Don't overthink it. Yes, Aaron Judge is having a great year. Yes, he's going to get paid all the money in the world. Yes, he deserves all the praise he's getting, and he is the best player offensively this year. But Shohei Otani is the most valuable player in Major League Baseball because he does both at an elite level. He is one of the best hitters, and he is one of the best pitchers, and you put that together, and you have the MVP of the league, plain and simple. But before I finish up this segment, I have to talk about his home run on Saturday night. Shohei Otani hit a home run the other night in Anaheim that I could hear in Los Angeles. I could hear it. It was the loudest sound off of a bat that I have ever seen. It was the hardest hit home run that Shohei Otani has ever had. The exit velocity on it was astounding. 118 miles an hour on the exit velocity. 118 miles an hour. It is the hardest hit home run of Shohei Otani's career and the hardest hit home run by an Angels player since StatCast began tracking that in 2015. Since 2015, the hardest Angels home run. Shohei Otani's 118-mile-an-hour home run is the Angels' hardest hit home run tracked by StatCast. He surpassed his own, which was 117.2 in 2021. He just keeps one-upping what he has done along his career. Sarah Langs had a, a great tweet. The batter who just crushed a 118-mile-an-hour Homer, 462 feet, also has a 2.90 ERA and struck out 13 batters his last time out. We are so lucky to witness Shohei Otani. There aren't a lot of people that can understand and grasp and appreciate Shohei as much as I think he deserves to be. But that sums it up really well. And that home run on Saturday summed up and just really culminated the week he had. It was one of the best weeks we've ever seen. And it was certainly the greatest back-to-back games that we have seen in the history of Major League Baseball. And it's just Shohei being the greatest show on earth and showing us again why he is one of the best players, if not the best player, in Major League Baseball. And that does it for this week's This Week in Shohei Otani News. All right, I have producer Rhea out here with me today. And producer Rhea... I need you. Uh, You know me. I get caught up in Shohei Otani stuff. Um, So, one, pumped you're out here again today. Producer Conrad's still on vacation. It's the longest vacation of all time. Uh, But where are we going next? Uh, After that Shohei segment, I get all worked up. Producer Conrad works hard, so definitely a vacation overdue for him. (laughs) But we do miss him, though. We miss him. So let's take a look at your top rookies, head of the class. Who do you have at number five? Yeah, head of the class, but first off, all jokes. By the way, everybody listening, producer Conrad is on vacation, and he has been working pretty much every day and is still on, you know, working on this episode, and what a stud he has been. A blessing for flipping bats, if I will. Uh, Head of the class, top five rookies of the week. We're going to start with Jack Sawinski of the Pittsburgh Pirates. What a week this guy had um one he had that game on father's day three home runs on father's day including a walk-off home run four home runs on the week six rbis a 1.40 ops also making like ridiculous plays in the outfield at the trop that really short field or short fence down the left field line he went over risked it all body on the line made a sick play Jack Sawinski, stud rookie, coming in for the Pirates here at number five. At number four, from the Kansas City Royals, Bobby Witt Jr. I I just love Bobby Witt Jr. 
started off the year slow as a lot of rookies around Major League Baseball did, but he has really picked it up. And if you don't watch enough of him, which you might not because he plays for the Royals and uh, they're not great this year, you, you should tune in just for him. Three home runs on the week, five RBIs, a 1.016 OPS, couple of doubles, great, great defense, made some sick plays. He's also really fast. He's a five-tool player. He really is, and he comes in at number four on this list of top five rookies, head of the class. At number three, the Atlanta Braves outfielder Michael Harris II. I really, really like this guy, and he came up. I, I was worried that the Braves might have called him up a little too quick, but hey, he's been killing it. 333 on the week, a homer, a triple, eight hits on the week. This rookie has come up and been fantastic. I tweeted this on Saturday. I didn't have falling in love with Michael Harris II on my bingo card for this season, but boy, do I. Dude is a stud, and I love watching him play. All factual stuff there, and he comes in at number three on head of the class this week. Moving on to number two, O'Neal Cruz makes his debut in the big leagues, just starts off the, the year for him, the first game in the major leagues this year, by throwing the ball the hardest across the infield that anybody has in baseball all year, hitting the ball harder than any Pirates player has all year, and running faster than any Pirates player has all year. That's what O'Neill Cruz did coming up this week. He had 259 on the week, seven RBIs, and three doubles o'neill cruz is a six seven shortstop the tallest shortstop to start a game in the history of major league baseball this guy's larger than life and he has a rocket for an arm he hits for power he's really fast he is a stud the future of the pirates if they don't screw it up which is a tall task is bright to brian hayes on the left side of the infield along with o'neill cruz please pirates front office don't screw up what you have going. You have two rookies on this list for this week. Unbelievable. And moving on, last but not least, the top rookie of the week, Julio Rodriguez of the Seattle Mariners. Um, just just killed it. What, what a week this guy had. And he, he's a super prospect. He really is. I say that a lot, but this is the reason why. Three homers on the week. Five RBIs, a 1.037 OPS. People don't realize people don't realize how fast he is, how much power he can hit for, the defense he plays. I mean, he does it all. He also just brings a love and excitement and a passion to the game that you know I love here on Flipping Bats. That's the whole point of this show. Julio Rodriguez is the staple player. One of the staple players for this show. And he showed it again this week. He rounds out this week's top five rookie uh, rookie players. Head of the class. Julio Rodriguez at number one. O'Neal Cruz at number two. Michael Harris, the second. Three, Bobby Witt Jr. of the Royals at four. And Jack Sawinski, another Pittsburgh Pirate. And he rounds out the list. But producer Rea... It is Tuesday, which typically means we're going to do a fun buy or sell segment. Are you ready for that? Are we good? Are, are you locked in? I'm excited. Let's do it. And what better way to start <laughs> it off than the team who you've had at the top of your power rankings for quite some time now, the Yankees. So buy or sell, the Yankees will make the World Series. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I mean, this just puts me in a in a pickle here. Either I buy, which means the Yankees are winning the American League pennant, or I sell, which means they are not going to win the American League pennant. I am going to sell. Reasonings, there's a few reasons. The Astros, the Blue Jays, the Red Sox. I believe those teams all have the potential to, to beat them in the playoffs, the, the most of which being, and I pray we get this, the Astros and the Yankees in the ALCS. But it's just, I'm not going to buy it because it's it's just a lot, you know? It's a lot to buy that they're going to be in the World Series. So I'm going to sell it. 
I think the Astros are still the team to beat in the American League. This could be the year the Yankees knock them off, but until they prove it, the American League runs through the Houston Astros. I'm selling that the Yankees make the World Series. I'm honestly surprised you sold that, but I think I do have a buy for you next. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So buy or sell, Otani is one of the top 10 pitchers in the MLB. In all of Major League Baseball, is Otani a top 10 pitcher? Yep, in all of MLB. Yeah, I am buying that for sure. We've seen what he's done over his last three starts. um, Just shows you the player and the person behind the scenes that we're seeing with Shohei. He had a bad start in New York where he was tipping his pitches and the Yankees knew it was coming, so he gave up a bunch of runs. Since that start, 3-0. One run given up in 21 innings pitch. This guy also, like, I'm not overthinking this one, and you shouldn't either. Shohei throws 101 miles an hour. He has one of the best sliders in the league. He has one of the best splitters in the league. If he wasn't a two-way player, which thank God he is, he would be a Cy Young winner already. I believe that. I still think he has the potential to do it this year or, or in the future. I don't know about this year. But he is a top 10 pitcher in Major League Baseball, absolutely. And it is absolutely remarkable that we can say that because he hit 46 home runs last year. Bye. All right, so next up, buy or sell, the Phillies without Bryce Harper. (sighs) I'm going to sell. The Phillies need Bryce Harper desperately. Uh, Yeah, they went out and made a lot of moves. And they can still be good, I think, without Bryce Harper. And and for those that are unaware of why this is being asked, Bryce Harper uh, broke his thumb, got hit in the hand the other day by Blake Snell. Just a really bad scene. Uh, And Blake Snell was visibly upset and shaken up by it. Just a a really sad scene. Nobody, Nobody wanted to see that happen. Bryce Harper, one of the best players in the game of baseball, a two-time MVP award winner coming off of an MVP award, has been fantastic again this year. Already has one torn UCL, a partially torn UCL in his right arm, which is why he's been DHing. And now this happens. He said he would have rather gotten hit in the face again. The Phillies need him. Uh, If they were in first place and had already been playing good, maybe I would have sold this. But I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna. Oh, I'm, maybe I would have Phillies season without Bryce Harper. Yeah, I am selling it. Maybe I would have bought it because they have really talented guys. But I think without him, they're not going to be able to make up the ground that they need to. Uh, I think they could have held ground, but I don't think they're going to be able to make up ground without him. So we will see. I will. I am selling that. What we got coming up next. All right, up next, Pete Alonso is the current RBI leader. Buy or sell that he'll win the RBI title? Pete Alonso, current RBI leader. Um, I believe I believe he's in, in first place by a good bit. He's got yeah, he's got 69 RBIs. Okay. 69. Jose Ramirez is close-ish. Paul Goldschmidt is in that conversation, but I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy this for a couple reasons. One, uh, he's on a really good team. I believe that matters. Um, The Guardians are a really underrated team this year. They have been better, but I I think that might just be a little, I don't think they're going to be a great team all year long. I I don't. Uh, Sue me for saying that if you're a Guardians fan. Uh, I know this is a surprise for you guys. I don't think you expect it to be this good. And it's really cool to see how good the Guardians have been. But I don't think they are a playoff team as the Mets are, meaning that there aren't going to be as many guys on base to potentially drive in for Jose Ramirez. Uh, Paul Goldschmidt is another option, but Pete Alonso has a good lead on him. I'm going to buy that Pete Alonso ends the season as the RBI leader. Can we also admire that he's at 69 RBIs? Well before the All-Star break? That's ridiculous. Where are we going next? All right, so next up, the Angels are currently fourth in the American League West. Buy or sell? They'll stay close to that division basement. I mean, what do you think about it? 
Buy or sell at the Angels finish in last place in the AL West? Uh, I'm going to sell that. Uh, Look, I do believe they go on a run. I do believe they are running out of time to make the playoffs. They're they're just too talented um, to not go on a run and be in that conversation. I believe they finish the year over 500. Does that get them in the playoffs? Mm, Maybe not. Probably not. I think the odds are against them of making the playoffs at this point. Uh, but do they finish in last place in the AL West? Absolutely selling that. Um, that's going to be the A's. That's going to be the Oakland A's. What we got up next? All right. Last but not least, there are currently four AL East teams in the playoffs in the se- season ended today. By or sell the Yankees, Red Sox, Rays, and Blue Jays all make it in the postseason? Ho, ho. Ray, the Yankees, Rays, Red Sox, and Blue Jays all making the playoffs. Uh, I'm going to sell. I'm going to sell that. I don't believe, I believe one of the Red Sox or Rays makes the playoffs. I don't believe they both do. The Yankees obviously make the playoffs. Um, the, the Blue Jays, I think, have a really good chance of making it. I think the Rays or the Red Sox will not. So for that reason, I will sell that four AL East teams all make the playoffs. But truly remarkable when you think about it that you can even ask that question. And it's totally fair. Uh, The AL East is remarkable. uh, And and there really is a good chance. There's a chance that four teams make the playoffs. But the Yankees are a certainty. Isn't it kind of crazy to think the Yankees, if the season ended right now, the Yankees would probably finish with more wins than, l- let me rephrase this. If the season for the Yankees ended right now and everybody else played out the rest of the season, the Yankees would probably still finish with more wins than a team or two when all is said and done. That's wild. It's probably going to be the A's, <laughs> but truly remarkable. Uh, that was fun. A good buy or sell segment. Producer Rhea. Thank you for being out here and joining me this segment uh, and this show. This has been another great episode, another another blast of an episode. Tuesdays are always good because I can highlight Shohei Otani on This Week and Shohei Otani News. And I can highlight the rookies, which works out well because now, in case you haven't heard, Flippin' Bats is five days a week. And I can talk rookies, I can have a Shohei segment, we can buy or sell, we can do whatever. Flippin' Bats is rolling. I hope you you guys are enjoying it. Make sure you're liking, subscribe to the episode, wherever it is that you listen to your podcast. Subscribe it, Flippin' Bats Pod. Also, we're on all social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, at Flippin' Bats Pod. We're also on YouTube same name you can watch every episode the video of it you can watch on youtube this has been a blast my friends we have a guest a great guest episode coming up for you on wednesday which is tomorrow i hope you all enjoy that and i will see you tomorrow for another episode of flipping bats thanks for listening 